How come I don't hear nothing? Ugh. Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Mama Mina. Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight is December 12th, no, December 6th, 2022. Uh, it's 8, 10 p.m. We will be continuing our officers training for UNIA ACL. I um, want to start with <clears throat> the uh, Ethiopian National Anthem. So if you would, uh, please stand at attention for our National Anthem. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let me jump over to make sure to share properly. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's let's see what I'm doing. So, a brief recap of. Since one through nine, um, I put this together. Um, I'll, I'll probably work on it and present it again later on. But I wanted to people. I wanted everybody to be able to visualize um, what we've gone over thus far with lessons one through nine. So um, lessons one through seven, and I think it'll be better if I did this. Well. All right, so lessons one through seven, um summarize with character uh it's about individual uh development and making sure that each one of us as individuals are good representatives of our race um and of of the UNIA um lesson 8 talked about the creation of societies so <clears throat> In theory, what we should be doing is creating, uh, with the UNIA, we are creating a society of individuals that have mastered uh, lessons one through seven. So society found with a foundation of intelligence, leadership, aims and objectives of the UNIA, uh, good speakers, um, awareness of death, uh, an example in Christ, and the base fundamentals of character. Uh, we're supposed to be building a society of individuals that display these characteristics. <clears throat> um, and then once we create that society, we still have to uh, communicate with other societies. So um, let me see, I'm trying to think of some examples. P political societies, so Democrats, Republicans, um, uh, police, um, politics, the mayor, um, businesses can be considered societies. Um, the LGBT group uh, is, is another society, but um, these are groups and, and the United States as well could be considered a form of a society. Um, but our job is to um, display the characteristics that we've mastered in lessons one through seven um, and try to expand our society, but at the same time, we have to deal with other societies. <clears throat> and that's where diplomacy lesson nine comes in. Um, lesson nine talks about how societies um, would interact <clears throat> with each other. So this is just a brief um, visual diagram that I put together to kind of recap uh, lessons one through nine. Uh, any any questions on this? Okay. All right. Well, give me get uh, let me get into the questions. I gotta fix fix these slides. I think it's just three, two or three. It's just two. Okay. 
So it's just two slides worth of questions. Um, so reviewing lesson nine, titled Diplomacy. First question, uh, what, is, what is diplomacy uh, from Garvey's perspective? How does Garvey define diplomacy? How, how nations deal with each other? Pretty much. Anybody want to add? As Garvey says, a word used to express the peculiar relationship between nations. Uh, it is the relationship that nations use to conduct their communications or approach in dealing with matters of state. The thoughtful and careful consideration of words and ideas express relationships between nations. Um, that's one of the big things when it comes to diplomacy and, and uh, the lessons that you take away from this, well, the, the, yeah, the lessons that you take away from this lesson um is centered around nations dealing with other nations so these are not things that we should be I, I don't recommend that these are things that we should be using within our own organization um but as i showed with the diagram um this is how we as a society as a nation as a government uh, interact with other societies other nations other governments <clears throat> any questions on that What are the two things that Garvey says we must first be in order to be a diplomat? What are the two things that Garvey say we must be in order to be a diplomat? A skilled thinker. Skilled thinker is one. What's, what's another one? Mm -hmm. A skilled diplomat. Um, any, let me see. Anybody else got anything for us? A psychologist. Psychologist, that sounds right. A very skillful thinker and psychologist. Um, so um, these are two characteristics that Garvey recommends uh, in order for us to be a diplomat. Any questions on that? What must diplomats be able to do to safeguard and protect himself in the interests he represents? What's diplomats be able to do to safeguard and protect himself in the interests he represents? What must, what's the question again? What must diplomats be able to do to safeguard and protect themselves and the interests they represent? I don't even know the answer to this. Hold up, say that one more time, Brother John. What must diplomats be able to do to safeguard and protect themselves and the interests they represent? Uh, wasn't it like hide, hide your, um, your interests or how you feel and something like that? Uh, I like that. Um, yeah, I know it's not, because this one isn't sell yourself. But... Yeah. Um to uh, read other people's minds and intentions huh. and use that knowledge to safeguard, uh, to safeguard and protect um, his own. Read other people's minds and intentions. So huh. in order to be a good diplomat and protect ourselves and the interests that we represent, uh, God says that we must be able to read people's minds and their intentions. Any questions? Uh -huh. uh, why must a diplomat always give expressions that carry double meaning? Why must a diplomat always give expressions that carry double meaning?
I want to say, um, does somebody else have, have, have an answer? I believe to be vague, to, to be able to back out at any time. Back out, yeah. To get back out at any time. Yeah. Be vague, back out at any time. Uh, yes, yes. Um, basically, they can't corner you into any one particular statement. If one expression is dangerous to affecting a good relationship, he can say it was not intended that way. So, um, yeah, it just gives us an out um, such that, you know, we can reinterpret um, what we were saying or how we were trying to say it. Questions, comments on that? Is that with the... Is, my fault. Is that when he's saying never say uh, don't um, answer a question with yes? Is that that part or am I thinking of something else? I think that's later on. Okay, okay. Uh, if we should feed, oh, what should we feed our opponent in order to get good results? What should we feed our opponent in order to get good results? From a diplomat standpoint, what should we feed our opponents in order to get good results? Um, good words or good and pleasant words. It's like, I want to say pleasant words that don't really mean anything. Good words that mean nothing. Win them with the perfect smile in the most gentle manner. So <clears throat> flattery, um, but good words that mean nothing. Hmm. But yeah, questions, comments on that? Okay. Uh, what is said to turn away wrath? What turns away wrath? A good smile. Good smile. I think it's one word specifically. What it said to turn away wrath. Perfect smile. It is a perfect smile. A kind word. <laughs> and a kind word. I thought it was kind. He actually said both. A perfect smile in the most gentle manner and a kind word. Mm, okay. Let me uh, modify Okay. Perfect smile and a kind word. <clears throat> Turns away wrath. Yes, it's said to turn away wrath. Number seven, if a man is going to kill you by threatening you, what does Garvey say that it is best to do? If a man is going to kill you and he's threatening to do it, what does Garvey say is best to do? I think that's a smile right there, right? I think that's what. Yeah, that's what I know. Smile with him, um, but um, Garvey went a little bit more in depth, but basically um, smile with them in hopes that, you know, they won't carry out the act. But if you, if you have, uh, you know, uh, unkind intentions on your face, then uh, he said that the person would kill you, you know, out of fear of you killing them first. So he said we should always smile. Hmm. Questions? I don't know about that. Say again. <laughs> I mean, they've been killing us forever. We can't keep smiling about that. Yes. I don't know. Hold on, let me see. Page seventy-seven. I saw, I'm on 77. I know that's what he's he's telling us. Um, yeah. Yeah, but he also goes on to to the I think is the next question to say that you know we gotta keep our heads and 
Uh, it said that a kind word turned away, turned away wrath. It is good diplomacy. If a man is going to kill you by threatening you, it is best to smile with him before he actually carries out the intention so as to prevent him from doing so by showing him a smile rather than to suggest the gravity of your indignation, which will cause him to think that you are going to kill him first. Then he will surely kill you in self-defense, even though the even though he first threatened you. Many a man had been killed when their assailant did not really mean to kill them, but only to bluff them. But in taking the matter so seriously and showing that he was going to do some killing too, he gets killed by the man protecting himself after his threat to keep from being killed. Um, but Look I think- Look at Black Wall Street. Those people were outright killed. Smiling oh, and, yeah. and obeying the laws. These crackers were just what, wrong. John, yes, yes. I believe that only pertains to um, Black people, uh, members of our own um, culture. I don't think that, um, just my personal opinion, I don't think that applies to somebody who's of another race that's wanting to kill you, to be smiling at them. I, I, I think there oh, pretty much point. is a distinction. You know? I, just, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. That's your interpretation. I'm not, you know, um, I'm not going to take that from you. I think um, he's more talking because we're on diplomacy. I think he's more talking about maybe, um, you know, um, just being diplomatic and how you move. So if somebody like threatens you, don't go back and threaten them. Smile at them. So, you know, he doesn't think you're going to go at him. That way you can get him before he gets you. He's not saying don't strike. He's saying don't let him know your intentions. You know, we try and be diplomatic. Mm. So, because I think he goes into saying if you, if somebody threatens and you and you react, then he's going to kill you. But mm. if they threaten you and you bluff them, you're like, okay, good brother. Everything's all good. You'll have a chance to get him before he gets you. Um, that's very important when you talk about dealing with diplomacy and how we yes. deal with other nations, yes. including the white man. Because, you know, we're quick to be like, white man comes and does something to us. We're quick to be loud about it so they know how to strategically move towards us. But if we, we, we just say, okay, everything's cool and we lay low, we'll be able to strike him before he strikes us. I think that's where he's trying to go with it. But if I'm wrong, somebody can input. I, I like that, um, Brother Everett. And again, I, I like how you brought it back to the foundation, diplomacy, you know, and that's why we, when we started, diplomacy is how nations deal with each other. So um, the the argument or the example that Garvey gives can be interpreted as something personal, um, but uh, I think we have to apply it uh, to diplomacy, to nations dealing with other nations. <clears throat> um, I think, Brother Everett, is, I think that was a great way that you expressed it. And I think that um, Mr. Garvey goes on to to kind of say say that when when he says that, you know, we need to keep our keep calm, collective, keep your head. And that way you don't die, but you can you can do just what you said. You can get yourself into the position where you can outmaneuver him or her, whether that be taking them out or just um, walking over them, whatever it is. Yeah, but even, yeah, and, and as Garvey said, I don't know if he said it yet, but we shouldn't uh, display our true intentions. You know, um, not until it's time to actually do it. But up until that time, we should be kind. We should be smiling. Um, we should offer kind words um, and, and we should be diplomatic. <clears throat> Anybody else want to comment on question seven? Hold up, um, Brother John. You know, I was just thinking that's real funny. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of the story of um, when Tupac and Nas was about to fight or beef in a park in New York. And um, Snoop Dogg was telling the story. He said Tupac was going off and everything. 
And now it's just, you know, dapped him up and smiled and gave him a hug and say, Pac, we all good. But Snoop Dogg said he saw like about 50 dudes with guns and Tupac was so busy running his mouth. So he said Tupac got in the car. I was like, you saw how he did it? You saw how I did it? But he was like, yo, they could have got us. So I think that's like a prime example where Nas was like, Nas. Real, you know, real smooth about it. This might be a crazy example, but that's a way where you kill them with a smile, but you know, you're ready to attack when they're not ready. This might be a bad example. Nas ain't got a lot of people with him, but he got a lot of people. Well, I, I play it uh, for everybody's context. Right. What happened was Nas ain't got a lot of people with him, but he got a lot of people with him, if you know what I mean. And I'm seeing him and I'm knowing because I'm a gang man. I'm seeing him with their hands on their guns. I step away from him. Him and Nas right here, boom. Nas like, what's up, Pac? Man, I love your music. I'm a fan. That's what Pac say. If you a fan, I dissed you, Jay-Z, Biggie. He named off a gang of my... I dissed all you on the song. And if you a fan and you ain't got no beef, don't say nothing. And Nas said, I love you. I never diss you. And he shook his hand and he hugged him. And then when he walked off, Pac said, yeah, I punked that. In my mind, I was like, nah, he let us slide. What happened was Nas ain't got a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so in that situation, Nas would have been uh, the diplomat. Uh, Nas ain't got a lot of people, but he got a lot of people with him, if you know what I mean. And I'm seeing him and I'm knowing. Um, so when well, hold on one second, but look, just briefly, but again, I think for me, one of the big takeaways is we're not just at this point, at this level of, of the, the course, we're no longer just representing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going into, uh, representing the communities and later on we'll talk about, uh, representing the nation, but, um, this is not about, you know, us as individuals. This is about us as representatives of our of our society. Go ahead. So my question was, when Black Wall Street was destroyed, and thankfully, uh, Garvey offered the Blue Cross nurses to help out, yeah. but there was no kind of... Um, retaliation to the state of those people at that time. Mm -hmm. So although we were the black government, but we didn't react at all to 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 that opposition. Well, to well, I, I wouldn't say we didn't react at all. Um, but again, um, going back to levels of society, and I would argue um, the people that, well, one thing I'll say first is, to my knowledge, Garvey did uh, offer the African Legion um, to support, <clears throat> uh, I believe. I don't have you know, um, documented evidence of it right now, but that's my understanding. Uh, and then second, is when we talk about society, what society do people identify with more? Do people identify more with the UNIA society or with United States, um, you know, Oklahoma, Tulsa society? And I would argue that at that time, uh, those individuals um, were more of a Tulsa society than a UNIA society. But the massive power of the organization worldwide, not only in Texas, but in the even throughout the United States. Yes, but from a was powerful. But were they organized from a UNIA standpoint um, in Tulsa? Maybe not, but they for sure was organized if that's where the Black Wall Street was at that time.
but the mass, the, but the the mass of the opponent. I mean, this white government, whether it was Texas or this whole United States, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they they did their dirt to no avail. I understand. I don't think we approached that um, moment in time as a nation, um, based on my knowledge. So, like, I don't know what the diplomatic steps were prior to uh, all-out war <clears throat> or, you know, fighting. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to comment on that? Nobody. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I did want to say something. Um, I believe during that time, um, they had so many different type of um hate crimes going on against um black people. Um, they had Red Summer. Um, every time there um that black people did stand up, there was um. Um, even more force used against them. So yes, mm -hmm. um, um, I believe that we, um, from what I've read so far, yeah, diplomatic, and that is the way we need to approach folks. But at the same time, they were using some tactics that I don't even think that um, that 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 couldn't even be um, that was uncomprehensible to humanity. Um, bombing people with um, bombs. I think that was the first time in Tulsa that. Uh, green, what was That's it? right. Black the Air Force Street. came out. That's right. Yeah, they. I mean, so um, I, I diplomatic, yes, but at the same time, the the type of um, the, during that time, it was just the crimes were just ridiculous. You know, the way the um the the Caucasians were approaching us was um was just barbaric. They came in like barbarians. I mean, you had the white knights and all of these other hate groups and stuff like that attacking us. So um. I, I believe it was only so much that could be done with any type of leadership in any way, shape, or form. Because, um, I mean, we were pretty much surrounded, like the Indians in the in the, or in the Alamo or something like that. So, um, um, yeah. So, the teachings as far as being diplomatic does work. It's just that um, during that time, um, it was pretty hard. I, I, just from all the readings I had, it was pretty hard to um, just be nice to to people or, you know, to even get some type of restitution or any type of justice during that time. That's all I had to comment on. Thank you, Brother Bruce. Anybody else want to comment? So my question then at that time, was there any kind of self-defense developed? I mean, aside from the, uh, American Legion, I mean, how much self-defense was taught? I can't answer that question. I mean, how much self-defense was taught uh, in the early 1900s? Um, I don't know if we, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if we, I know we get, we got to that level uh on in small groups but not on a mass level uh, to my knowledge i think we were still at a point of uh organizing and trying to you know get everybody uh, under the umbrella of the unia to be a part of this society uh called the universal negro improvement association but you know i mean there's Brother John, I go ahead I, I got one more thing, sir, and I got it. I'm going to get off. Um, I, I've read two books recently. Um, we Will Shoot Back, I believe, I think it's called We Will Shoot Back, and um, mm. this nonviolent stuff will get you killed. These two books break down what was going on during that time and how much resistance was there. But if you go through the book, you'll see we, we was doing stuff. You know, there was a lot of people that was um, standing up to the um, white power structure and everything. It's just like I said, these were some barbarians. I mean, we talking even the the, the um, segregation and the um, apartheid that was here in the United States. They even had little 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 kids that had more control 
than a, a, a 30 year old grown black man. All right. So a little a little six year old kid can come up and tell and call a, a grown man boy and tell him to sit down and and, and bark like a dog and do whatever they wanted to do. Um, so if a, if a black man was walking down the street and everything and a little six year old boy came down and he said, move in, in word, then boom, he have to move or it would be some retaliation behind that. So re these two books right there, they break down a lot of stuff and everything. There's many more books um, that, that shows that black people, we did stand up. We stood up um, uh, vigorously, but um, like I said, these are, we were some barbarians, man. So um, that's all I really had to say. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mama Amina, are you suggesting that, um, that Mr. Garvey and the UNIA engaged the U.S. in in an armed conflict like war? Uh, no, I don't want to suggest that. How? But I do know that if we if we if we say that we are a government and our people are being attacked. Correct, but at this point, or at that point, um, provisional government, and we didn't have our own sovereign space to act from, right? So you're a government, but you're within the, another government's boundaries. And Mr. Garvey did, um, I agree with Brother John, offer assistance, the UNI offer the UNIA as assistance, but not as um, what as the armed rebellion. If that makes sense. Um, that's what it was, you're right. But again, let me just try to bring it all um bring it back um this is garvey's course of african philosophy uh lessons that he learned um you know from a lifetime of organization so uh we you know when i look at it i try to be careful of um what i am analyzing and this is lesson nine uh just talking about diplomacy and it follows Lesson eight, which talked about uh, society. So again, for me, these lessons that we're reading, it comes after we create our society. Um, and once we create that society and we want to interact with United States government, we want to interact with um, you know, local city government, um, then we bring out these uh, aspects of diplomacy. <clears throat> but uh, we're trying to apply diplomacy um, before we get organized. And that that's not how the lessons are, are laid out. <clears throat> but again, diplomacy <laughs> is, is how nations deal with other nations. So if we're not going to acknowledge ourselves as a nation, um, then we shouldn't be uh, considering any of these things um, to be applied to, to uh, a, a non-national struggle. Any other questions, comments on um, less, number seven? Okay. Um, Next question, and I think this gives some a little bit of context to the previous question. What does Garvey mean when he says, quote, we should never lose our head and, and why? What does Garvey mean when he says we should never lose our head and why? So uh, we can stay calm and make good decisions to save our life. Um, make good decisions and save our life. I like that. Anybody else? Where's my book? Yeah, um, pretty much. Um, 
So you may need your calm and collective judgment to save your life, uh, logical rationale. Um, so we're not supposed to get caught up in, I would say anger at, at least. I wasn't gonna say emotions in general, but um, they've. I've been told, you know, emotions can cloud your judgment, but um, our judgment is supposed to be logical uh, and rational and have, yeah, um, um, a previous lesson comes to my mind where he talked about uh, good reason and good judgment. But, um, we should understand why we're doing things and, and why we are carrying out the actions that we carry out. Questions, comments on that? Uh, question nine. Oh, wait, hold on. Did somebody say something? Else? Okay. Question nine. Why does Garvey say that morally a diplomat must be a scamp? Why does Garvey say that morally a diplomat must be a scamp? Hmm. Oh, uh, is that something about a twister being mind playing my game? Yes. Uh -huh. I can't remember the whole thing. Something about uh -huh. yeah, being a mental mind game twister. Or something. Uh -huh. Why would a diplomat need to be a mental twister? Uh -huh. I would say just so nobody can read him. He could play, you know, he could play uh um he could play games with the people he's dealing with so they don't really know what he's thinking. Not bad, um, not bad, but it's more direct. His reasoning for saying this is more direct. Um, I gotta go to the text. Right. Okay, let me jump over to the text. Uh, and I'll, I'll go over the last one first, the, the previous question, and then we'll go into this question. Garvey says, never lose your head in dealing with a problem because in doing so, you are bound to blunder and ultimately lose. If you are in an accident where you come face to face with death, don't lose your head because you may need your calm and collective judgment to save your life. The moment you lose your head, you are taking chances. The odds are against you. So um, we should always be thinking logically and rationally. And then next one, morally, a diplomat must be a scamp and that he must be a mental twister. He cannot deal with the affairs with a clean conscience because he is to anticipate the evil of other men's designs because the world and mankind are immoral and dishonest in their behavior. Uh, he necessarily has to adopt such a method as to safeguard himself or his interests from such designs. So um, the fact that the world is messed up um, we, uh, as diplomats must, uh, kind of expect that. And in dealing with these types of individuals, there may be some things, um, that we have to do or some things that we have to say, um, that could be considered, uh, immoral. But, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, the position of a diplomat is, is not a, you know, always friendly, uh, position. We're doing what's best uh, in our interest and the interest of those that we represent. Any questions on that? Must be a mental twister. It is to anticipate the evil of other men's design. Uh, the world and mankind are immoral and dishonest. And we'll get into that more on lesson 11, where he talks about man, but um, we have to expect the worst uh, in men. And as, as diplomats dealing with those types of individuals, um, sometimes we got to do what's you know best for our people. 
No questions on that one. Uh, what does Garvey say about truth and lying? Uh, and again, this is in regards to diplomacy. What does Garvey say about truth and lying? Uh, I want to say always tell the truth, but it's okay to lie for your for the cause of your uh never mind. I can't remember how to put it. Something about it's okay to laugh. It's for your cause. I think I, I can't remember. So good. Yeah. I'm close, but I, I may, I may, I'm probably way off. No, you're very close, brother Everett. Anybody want to help, brother Everett? What does Garvey say about telling the truth and lying? Uh, and again, this is in regards to diplomacy. So don't be. Don't be doing this within your organization, talking about I learned this uh, at officer's training. <clears throat> this is diplomacy <laughs> dealing with nations. All right. Garvey says, yeah, basically lie if we have to and um, ask for forgiveness later on. Uh, if the truth is going to affect your calls, never speak of it, but go around in every kind of ambiguous way to justify your lie to save the cause. Um, and you said later on, um, yeah, ask for forgiveness later if you if you must. But <clears throat> it's a tough lesson. Um, you know, we should have a good foundation with lessons one through eight before we um, try to jump into diplomacy. But um, at this stage, the ends justifies the means. <clears throat> so if we have good reason, um, we may have to be dishonest in regards to diplomacy. Questions, comments? Huh. It's open. I have a question. This is Sister Doreen, 407. Sister Doreen, go ahead. Yes, sir. So and to lie, um, what would give, be some of those reasons that it would be a necessary to have an untruth, to give an untruth? Uh, a good, quick one, easy one would be... Um, you know, military questions. Um, if somebody asks you, you know, how many troops you have or how many troops you have in a certain location, um, you know, if you've got a thousand and you tell them you only got a hundred, you know, um, you're lying, but you're doing it for the greater good. But wouldn't it better for me to refuse to answer that question? Um, you could. John. Yes. I got one more, man. <laughs> I, I got a for instance. Let's say we were in a bar, me and two other um, UNIA brothers, right? And um, we got in a fight with a white man. He pulls out a gun and then we end up killing him. Then I, I think that would be a perfect example where we would, we would be telling some untruths because um, there's only three witnesses there or four witnesses and two of us, uh, we all work together. That one guy that's left out, he would be stuck out in my, my point of view. All right? I think that that's a, a, an example of an untruth that will be told. Yes, that is. Um, that's a little. Uh, I mean, it's hard to pull out specific examples, but in general, the general concept is the same. Um, we have to do what is best uh, for the masses of our people. Um, so if that comes down to, you know, being dishonest, then we do it. Uh, specifically in regards to diplomacy again. Uh, hold on. Okay. I, I think that's not a bad idea, but um, 
you know, we try not to, to tell um, an untruth. And, um, <clears throat> but I do understand your point. Because even to protect myself, if I had to, I would tell an untruth. Yes. And again, um, this is diplomacy. So uh, it's about relationships. Um, and, you know, you know, as Garvey said earlier, you know, um, feed, feed your inner, feed your opponent kind words that don't mean anything. So those could be lies as well. You know, you look nice today. You know, I, I love your shirt. Um, that's your lying, but it's about creating that relationship to where they trust you, you know? So, so if you do tell them, uh, something that's not true based on the relationship, um, they're less likely to question it. Um, I think I'm sharing the right thing. Yeah, I am. So, and again, this follows the previous question of why um, we have to be a scamp. Um, but basically, the world is full of people like this, um, full of dishonest, immoral people. If we're going to be representatives of our people and have to deal with um, these other nations and groups, you know, we got to fight fire with fire. You know, we can't come in and, and, and I'll just read it as Garvey says, you cannot be a true Christian before the act, but become so afterwards by repentance, which is personal. If you are protecting the interest of others, you have to sink your own personality, but still recognize the fact that you are responsible to those others. Therefore, you have to adopt all methods of diplomacy to protect others. Hence, you cannot do so with a very Christian soul because most of the souls you are dealing with are corrupt. So if we go out you know, with the genuine Christian principles, um, we will be taken advantage of, <clears throat> you know, basically. Nobody else is playing by those rules. Um, let me see what the next question is, see if I can read a little further. Yeah, okay. Uh, Garvey, Garvey says, after you have dealt with them and you have won your point, if there was any act that was immoral or crooked, which enabled you to win your point, then pray afterwards for forgiveness, but not before. Be sure that the act is done and leave the act where it is. If it is in the interest of others, then square your conscience with God. Um, but again, we are in lesson nine. Um, this comes after lessons one through seven. It comes after lesson eight on society. Uh, and now um, we're talking about interacting with other societies that don't have the same beliefs uh, that our society does. If the truth is going to affect your cause, never speak of it, but go around it in every kind of ambiguous way to justify your lie to save the cause. If you have won your cause by a lie, then as early as possible, try to make the cause right but only after you have won for no cause can continue successfully without the righteousness of the thing from all your imaginative experience. So um, I think Garvey's pretty clear. Um, again, this is diplomacy. Um, this is us being representatives of uh, not just ourselves, but our communities, our societies. <clears throat> And when we're dealing with these politicians, um, they don't, you know, they're not coming in with any type of, uh, you know, I need to be Christian about it. <clears throat> uh, they're being very ruthless. So we got to understand that, expect that, and, um, you know, be able to deal with them in the like manner. Questions, comments? Thank you. That's really good. That's okay. I can deal with that. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is, you know, this, this, this is not an easy course. This is a tough course. This is not for, you know, the, the people that just came into the UNIA. Um, this may, you know, some of these beliefs in the way Garvey presents the information 
can be misunderstood. Um, so we have to be careful uh, and and consider that you know Garvey was a man that wanted the best uh, for his people. So that's that's the foundation of my uh, interpretation. Um, yeah. Next question in regards to our enemies, what should we profess and what should we give them? It sounds similar to the last question, to a previous question. I think the answers are similar as well. Friendship. We should profess friendship. What should we give them? So let's see uh, nine words again. Um, profess friendship for your enemy. Offer your enemy gifts you can afford to lose. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's nice. That's a good one. But again, um, as diplomats, what's what's important is um, the end, you know, the end goal, um, but in, in the process, the relationships. And we have to maintain certain relationships, uh, even if we know that that group, society, or nation doesn't want the best for our people, um, we still have to, you know, play these games. <clears throat> so questions, comments on this? Okay. Uh, let, let's see. Number 12, why should we avoid yes or no answers to important questions? Uh, and again, this is in regards to diplomacy. Why should we avoid yes or no answers to important questions? Um, dang, I think I just had that too. I think it's so we won't get caught up and um, we can always get out of a situation. I want to say now, I don't want to say, uh, but I think it was so we don't get caught up and we can always backtrack and say we didn't mean it that way. Something like that. Yeah. Um, similar to what he said earlier, um, it gives us the ability to reinterpret, uh, you know, what people well, yeah, when you say yes or no, it's too, it, it, it doesn't give you any um, room to change what you meant. Uh, let me see. Let me go. Uh, offer your enemy gifts that you can afford to lose so as to win him like the Greeks bringing gifts. Your words must be formed in positive when you want to commit other people. For instance, do you intend to pay my money? Have you made up your mind to answer my letter? Always let it be a question that can be answered with yes and yes or no. Uh, hold on, that's somebody else. That's, that's asking them. Don't suggest to anybody in long sentences when you ought to commit yourself, do so in veiled language and never finally commit yourself until you're ready to close the matter. Always try to escape giving yes or no to any question that is important. If you have to say yes or no, do so in long explanations so that you may escape out of the explanation uh, from the positive answer. Uh, if trouble is involved, it becomes your defense. Always try to leave in your remark or words room for controversy or denial of meaning as decided on by other people. But again, um, we are diplomats um, and we don't give clear definition until we want to give a uh, clear definition. So we're not just representing ourselves, but we're representing our communities. And um, we should keep a lot of this information uh, secret, basically, you know, uh, it ain't nobody else's business. <clears throat> so that's like a, being a politician for real. That's kind of exactly like you teaching how to be a politician because that's what they do. Yes. Yes, sir. Questions, comments? Leaving your remark or words room for controversy or denial of the meaning. But yeah, I didn't mean what you what you think you heard. Um, what I was trying to say was something else. You know. But yeah, our words, again, our words are not just for ourselves, but for our communities. Um, this is how organizations are, are taken down you know, because a quote unquote leader, you know, says something and, and now the entire, you know, with Malcolm, you know, now the entire organization has to 
disavow uh, this person's statements, you know, um, because they not only represent themselves, but they represent the entire organization. So we are at this stage, as, as Brother Ever said, uh, we got to put our political hats on. But it's not just about us. You know, we are leaders of, of communities, you know, so we, sh we, we need to know how to behave uh, like such. All right, question 13. What should you offer men and women if you want them to talk? What should you offer a man or woman if you want them to talk? A drink. A drink. I think it's anybody else? Is it compliments? Courtesy. Courtesy, but yes, uh, find out his weakness and cater to that weakness. Um, whether it's a drink, uh, he talked about um, women. Um, you know, if a man, you know, is weak when it comes to women, um, we got to do what we got to do um, to get the information that we're looking for. But um, courtesy was the general sentiment. Whatever that person's weakness is, um, we care to. Questions, comments? Who should have access to valuable diplomacy papers and why? Who should have access to valuable diplomacy papers and why? The international administrator? The international administrator. Anybody else got? No one. Um, only God. Keep them secretly and privately because you don't know who may give you away, even. Um, That's it. Away. Yes. Yep. Uh, so, yes, this goes in hand with um, lesson one, I believe, where Garvey was talking about our private libraries. Um, and there's some things you know, we have to basically take to the graves um, with us. There's some things we can't really trust uh, or we shouldn't trust others with. And this is, you know, he even, I'm not, well, he, you know, even even our wives and, and um, husbands and things like that. Um, uh, Garvey says, never give valuable papers or anything of value to a first acquaintance or a cordial friend or neighbor to keep. Is that what he said? Anywhere? Hold on. Um, never accept um, if the documents are very valuable by way of information don't allow even members of your own household to keep them keep them secretly and privately because you don't know who may give you away even innocently so um, people may say something out of ignorance um, that they didn't even mean to say you know oh I saw yeah I saw brother John reading um, you know a book that was titled uh, Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World. You know, like it's not anything that you would think, you know, you're not thinking that it's anything bad, but <clears throat> you could be giving the wrong information to the wrong people. So uh, to prevent all of that as diplomats, um, we must have a diplomatic approach and understand what's to be kept secret and keep those things uh, secret. We have that responsibility. Any questions, comments on that? I think that's where it ends. Yeah. All right. Um, very important lesson. I mean, all of these lessons are important. But again, um, <clears throat> when we look through the course, you know, it should be a development um, that we, when we look back, we should see development. Uh, intelligence, uh, how to be studious, um, uh, never stop learning, uh, reading four hours a day, reading chapter of the Bible, um, leadership, characteristics of leadership. Um, uh, uh, in order to lead, you must be superior to your followers. So it always teaches us to always be a step, <clears throat> a step ahead, um, have the appearance of leadership as well. Aims and objects of the UNIA. 
um, you know, what the organization stands for. Um, I think Black Nationhood was also here, um, talked about how everything that we do should be uh, aiding us in some way in our final goal or our ultimate goal, which for us is a sovereign nation uh, on the, the continent of Africa and United <clears throat> Africa. Elocution, um, speaking, you know, um, as we <clears throat> develop this intelligence and leadership characteristics, um, we should be speaking. Uh, Garvey says, the pen is mightier than the sword, but the tongue uh, is mightier than, than both combined. So <clears throat> um, we should be good speakers. We should be good representatives of ourselves and the things that we are learning. Uh, we should be comfortable with um, the eternity of, of, of life and death um, and the relationship. You know, in order for us to be here, others had to pass on before us. So uh, we shouldn't be selfish or, or afraid uh, to do what everything in the world must go through. Christ as the example, um, the highest example that we could possibly attain um, in, in the sense of um, having our will of the Holy Spirit in line with our free will. Uh, and if we do that, then we should be able to, to attain um, the same potential that, that Christ did in, in a sense. Character, uh, the basic fundamentals, um, you know, if we can't reach the highest goal of, of Christ and be completely in line with our um, uh, Holy Spirit, the will of the Holy Spirit, then there's basic fundamental things that we should not be doing. Um, and that's where character kind of outlines that. Social system, so creating societies, um, how societies are just creations of individuals uh, and societies are in a sense based upon the thoughts and the, the motives and the mor morale of those individuals. Um, but that's how you get, you know, LGBT groups. That's how you get, you know, um, nationalist groups, um, quote unquote, hate groups, um, you know, different types of religious groups. Uh, these are societies that have been formed of individuals that have um, similar interests. <clears throat> uh, then lesson nine, we talk about diplomacy uh, and how to interact um, one society to another. So um, next lesson we're going to touch on is economy. Um, this individual as well as group economy. Um, but as a nation, something that we should be aware of. And as individuals, it's something we should be aware of. Um, I don't have anything else. Any questions, comments before we go into the reading for today? <clears throat> okay. Um, brother Macy's, will you be reading for us this evening? Sure. Thank you, my brother. Um, and the floor is yours. Lesson 10. Economy. There are several kinds of economy, but this subject deals specifically with financial economy. Economy is based upon good and sane judgment. The practice of it is that you must always be on the safe side of your bargains or your dealings. Never exhaust yourself. Always have a reserve. There should always be something left over that you may fall back on in time of need. Money is the prop of life in that it pays for all necessities and offers security for all opportunity. In earning money, one should never spend as much money as he earns. That is bad business. Whatever his earning capacity, he should always be thrifty enough to save at least 15 to 20% of his income, storing it up for making better opportunities when they come and providing for a rainy day. If you spend all you earn, you're on the edge of bankruptcy all the time. If you spend more than you earn, you are not only a fool, but you are a very dishonest person, and you are bound to suffer without any other chance. Therefore, always make it a policy to save money out of your earnings, never mind how small it is. If you have better commercial ideas than your present job calls for, and your present, your present remuneration war warrants, 
Then save out of your present earnings. Take advantage of the opportunity to improve yourself in a reasonable time in achieving these ideas. Never engage yourself in living luxuriously when you can only live ordinarily. Ultimately, you are bound to fail and be the laughing stock of your friends in the community by not being able to keep up your luxurious standard of living on a limited purse. Never buy anything for more money than you have or positively expect to have when the time limited for the purchase, within the time limited for the purchase. Never give away money that you cannot spare. Never give away anything of value that can be turned into money except you can spare it. Never borrow on interest from anybody. If you can, within a reasonable time, pay your debts. If you pay your own debts with your own money, you will save the interest for yourself that you pay to others. The moment you start paying interest to others on money borrowed, you become a slave working for somebody else. It is better to wait until you have the money yourself to do a thing before you borrow it to purchase that thing and pay interest on it. At the same time, you must use good judgment to find out whether it's whether it is to your advantage to seek an opportunity of doing something big with somebody else's money, even with interest to be paid. You must decide if that particular business will positively bring enough to meet the interest and give you sufficient profit to justify the risk you take. And assuming the responsibility of paying interest to others may be of value. The moment you are loaned money or interest to do anything, the person loaning you the money must be credited as being wise enough to know beforehand if more money can be made out of the thing or investment that only the, then only the interest. If it is so, it's likely that he himself will go into that business and not give you a chance to go into it with his money. He may be a friend and want to help and want to help you. But few money lenders are friends. They are lending for, for usury and have no soul. At least at least their souls are bad. So be careful in borrowing money to go into business. It is better you save and wait until you are able to go into business on your own account before you take the risk. It is bad business to go into any business without enough capital to run that business. 99 cases out of 100 will fail. Always consider costs before you go into anything. And in fighting out the cost, be sure that there is a margin of profit before you do the thing. Otherwise, it is not worthwhile doing. If you are going to address a meeting 100 miles away, first count the cost of railroad fare or transportation to and from, the cost of the meeting, your living expenses while going and staying at the meeting and returning from the meeting, the percentage to pay to those who are looking after the meeting and the prospect of getting a crowd large enough that will meet all these expenses and leave you with a profit of at least 25%. If there is no profit in it, you're taking a risk and when you are finished, you will be sorry you went. Always work out be beforehand the possible financial results of every transaction and be sure that you arra your arrangements are of such as to bring profit at the end. Otherwise, you're wasting time. As far as the UNIA is concerned, you should always calculate the profit for the association in everything you do. Profit comes in many ways to the association. For instance, if you go to address a meeting 100 miles away, profit will come by new members joining the association, the, establish, the establishing of agencies there for the association. Leaving behind the sentiments of the association may be an advantage to any money you receive for the expenses of the meeting. As long as you have converted and attached someone permanently to the UNIA, that may be considered as profit. Always seek to get some profit. Otherwise, your work is a failure. When your work is to be judged, you will find that a balance sheet of how much you have received and how much you have dispersed as a, as, as a representative of the association and how much net you have turned into the movement and how much morally you have helped the movement will be called for. If your balance sheet shows that for one month, three months, six months, or one year, you have not added anything net to the association, your importance in it is nil. You will not account uh -huh. for much. Your status will be far below that of others who have been more valuable to the movement. A president or representative who can show that for the year he or she has turned over 500, 1,000, or 10,000 net to the association occupies a position of eminence that calls for the greatest recognition of service rendered. Another president or 
representative may occupy no such position of recognition because of his failure. Men and women are prompted on their record. Their oh, record must be taken. If their record is that of failure, they remain failures until they can prove otherwise. There is no other standard by which you can judge the ability of a man. Always seek to get substantial value for their work because you will never be able to recall them as they move along. Whenever you want to sell anything, unless you meet somebody who is badly in need of that thing, you are always going to be offered less than the value of the thing. So never buy anything for its full value, otherwise you will have it at a loss. It is better to buy things for cash or on short term rather than on long term. A long term purchase carries a greater percentage of interest on the purchase. Something that you, something that you purchase on terms can be bought at almost half the price if bought for cash because people are also anxious to sell for cash, even though they make a sacrifice of the thing because they want the cash. When you buy on terms, you must bear the burden, not the seller. When you buy for cash, the seller bears the burden and, and the loss to get cash. Always have cash and bargains. Always have cash and bargains will always show up. If you have no cash, when you see bargains and want them, you pay twice the price for them when you buy them on terms. Never live above your income. Never live up to your income. Never assume responsibility. You are not prepared for it. It will burden you down. Never marry broke. Never marry before you are ready. Never allow anybody to force you to do anything against your will. If you can see a thing and get good results from it and at a cheaper price, don't pay a dearer price except you have money to throw away. Don't lose your head in thinking that something is going to run away. Therefore, you must grab it now. Following that attitude, you may find yourself to be a big fool because what you grabbed here, thinking it is a wonder, you may find thrown away next door and not worth anything. Always look around first. When you are in doubt, try to find the duplicate. You may come back to the first, but if a thing isn't in the neighborhood with one person, it is almost likely that a similar thing is also in the same neighborhood. Search the neighborhood first before you decide to lay all of your money on one thing. Never think that one thing or that one person is the only peach in town. There may be better peaches on the tree. Try to curb your weakness for being a spendthrift. Every time you are tempted to spend 10 cents or a dollar on frivolous things that you would not get any direct profit or return from, hold your hand. Count 10 because you do the thing. Say to yourself, I have any other pressing need for or use for this money better than this frivolous thing. There is always something else that you really need. Therefore, you will keep the money in your pocket. Never give your money away outside of your race. If you are called upon to give it to God, ask yourself if God is really going to get it. Only when you feel that it is going into a channel that God will really appreciate himself should you give it because God himself doesn't want money but a good cause in his name may need it and you should first find out if there is really a cause to send a man touring around the world in the name of God for his own pleasure is not giving to God to give a man more worldly goods than he has already is not giving to God to give to give to help carry on a social service work in the community or to help the poor of the community or to rescue the children of the community is giving to God. If you have to be critical in giving to God, be even more so when you give to men. It must be for a good cause and the nearest cause to you is the cause of your own race. Never fail to give charity when charity is needed within your own race, but don't allow yourself to be tricked. If an old thing is good, don't buy a new one. Don't follow fashion for fashion's sake, follow your own judgment for intelligence sake. If nothing is wrong with your suit of clothes, don't buy a new one because someone else has done so. All it may need is attention and so with everything. You may badly need the money later on that you may spend on a new suit. It is better to have the money than the thing because when trouble comes, you can run with your money, but you may not be able to carry all the things. The largest sum of money can be carried in your pocketbook while the weight of other things may cost may cause you to wait for the next train. And by waiting, you may lose. 
put your values more in money than in things. Only have those things that are necessary. You have the ambition to be greater than you are and you don't have the means to immediately do so, then practice rigid thrift in your present position by saving as much as you can so that in a given period of time, you will be able to change your position to reach your objective. Never consume all you have and then expect to climb higher. It cannot be done. Never go into anything in business that you know nothing about. No fool can make a success of anything. Therefore, know your business before you go into it to make a profit out of it. Never live on the capital of your business. You must live on, on the profit. If you start to live oh. on the capital, then if you, if you start to live on the capital, there will soon be no capital and no business. If you mean to stay in that business, whatever the profit is, live only on that profit and not on all of that profit. Otherwise, the time may come when you have to live on the capital because you made no profit for that period. Because business is only successful when you are making profit and not spending all the profit. Whenever an enemy or any person attempts to create prejudice against your organization within the government, with the government, take immediate steps to counteract the statement and reassure the government that you have no intention of doing anything not in keeping with the law. Always watch for this because the government can easily outlaw your organization and curtail or prevent your activity. Therefore, don't join any movement that the government is not favorable, favorably inclined to tolerate, chiefly communism. Let the communists fight their own battles. Let other people carry on their own discord, have nothing to do with them. The more they carry on discord and you keep away from it, the better it will be for you because by keeping your head, you'll be able to see more clearly and get an advantage. Never let the government put you on the defensive. It will create prejudice against you. Keep out of the court as much as you can. If possible, never go there except to do social service work to help others. Try to never be charged with a crime or be on trial. It will affect the association and affect you. Always try first to settle racial disputes without going to the law. Law is expensive and uncertain. When you go to the law too often, you establish a bad record. And when anybody wants to know anything about you, particularly government officials, they can search the court record. Keep away mm -hmm. as, a, as a defendant. Encourage the people to keep away and not waste their money in litigation. The litigation can be settled by you or any responsible representative of the race. The people pay too many fines in court. The money they pay for fines could be used for the family and their own benefit. Always counsel Negroes not to be anxious to start litigations or to prosecute each other if it can be avoided. Going to court too often gives the race a bad name and causes the government to think badly of the race. Always try to impress the government that you are a law-abiding citizen so that when you make a request of the government, it may, it may respect the request. Always keep your good work before the government and make the government aware, particularly social service work, charitable work, educational work. This does not mean racial education. Your racial education is private like the Jews. Make the government aware of all the public education tending towards good citizens. It should primarily be brought to the attention of the government. Thank you, Brother Macius. That completes lesson 10, uh, titled Economy. Um, we've got a few minutes. I'll open the floor. Any questions, comments, or observations uh, from lesson 10? The floor is open. Um, this was the one that <clears throat> I pull, it's got a lot of good information in here. Um, so yeah, we, we'll have some good questions next week. <clears throat> one of the big takeaways for me, a president or representative who can show that for the year he or she has turned over 501,000 or 10,000 
net to the association occupies a position of eminence that calls for the greatest recognition of service rendered. Another president or representative may occupy no such position of recognition because of his failure. Men and women are promoted on their record. Their record okay. must be profitable. If their record is that of failure, they remain failures until they can prove otherwise. There is no other standard by which you can judge the ability of a man. Always seek to get substantial value uh, for their work because you will never be able to recall them as they move along. But uh, our financial records is of importance. Um, and if we expect promotion, uh, we should have a, we should be able to show a profitable financial record. Um, that's one of the takeaways that I got from this lesson. Okay. Um, our floor is still open. Uh, I'm gonna go through the attendance. Uh, and we will close out once the attendance is complete. Seems like he talked about a little bit more diplomacy. A little bit more diplomacy? Dealing with the government. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, again, yeah, and I, that's why I love this, the structure of this text um, and how we should basically, before we go to the next lesson, we should be mastering the previous lesson. So uh, he follows up um, basically talking about the reputation of the race as a whole um, and how we you know, take a part of that responsibility. Um, the government should know about our charitable work. Um, we should not be going to the government for lawsuits, you know, but um, our reputation when it comes to our interactions with the government should be positive, uh, should be charitable, um, such that when they hear the name, the UNIA, <clears throat> um, there's nothing but good thoughts and and, you know, um, good work that has been done. So that's what our name and our reputation should be associated with. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just Brenda here, Brother Clyde did not make it today. Sister K, Brother Charles. So. Marvia is here, Barbara, Brother Anthony, Sister Magraba, Sister Elon, Brother Bruce, Brother Macius, Sister Shashan, Brother Mervin, Brother Everett, Naya, no, no, Brother Art, he did not make it today. Robert James didn't make it. Chaplain Mitchell did not make it. Brother Andrew, let's see. Mama Mina. Bob James. Oh, thank you, thank you. And yeah, thank you for that. I know he had to step out and he did say he would call in. Thank you. Um Sister Erica. Thank you, Brother Omasius, as well as Bob James. Brother Kim Mardo was here. Um, let me share the attendance. And if anybody sees anything that needs to be corrected. Um, um, <clears throat> so. That's all I have. Uh, I think I got everybody's attendance for today. Um, greetings, Brother John. Brother Andrew, greetings. Greetings, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, the next meeting, and this is the next meeting, will be 
uh, what trying to find? Is there like a break for this holiday season coming up? Or yes. Um. Yeah, we got one day off. Well, what I I don't know if I if I have the schedule, so I know so I'm a little ignorant here. But, but um, but what 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 day it is we have off? Twenty seven. Which, which one? I just was wondering. The twenty seventh huh? will be our week off. Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. There's my information. You got my attendance, brother John. Yes, sir. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is is Ross Marvin on this call? No, he's not. No, he's not. Um, I don't know if I raised this with you before, but you know, I uh, I'm trying in in uh, on some level to try to get uh, a Marcus Garvey Marcus Garvey statue from Marcus Garvey Park in Harlem, New York. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if I could get any kind of assistance with that. Um, what type of assistance you looking for? Um, I, uh, you have our support, but we're here in Atlanta. Um, it would be best. <clears throat> um, you are our secretary, correct? I am indeed in training. So we will have a secretary's call, let me see, coming up on the 14th. Um, I think that will be the best opportunity to share it with um, our brothers and sisters in New York because uh, we would need their buy-in and support. Uh, They would be kind of legs, you know, on the ground because you're in Virginia. So we would need somebody local to kind of coordinate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Only 40. So I will get a link for that meeting, correct? Yes, yes. Um, check. It'll be uh, email primarily. Uh, I may send out a text, but uh, look for it in your email um, probably on the 13th or the 12th. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. I appreciate that very much, Brother John. Much appreciate it. Mama Mina. Do you want to make an announcement about our Kwanzaa celebration? Um, not on this call. Um, on this, yeah, we, we will do that on the 11th. Um, most of, a majority of the people on the call um, are not in Atlanta, so I'm not going to oh, okay. you know, belabor it. Um, that type of information. We're looking at doing Kwanzaa here in Atlanta, but I'm sure a lot of the other cities are doing Kwanzaa uh, locally as well, but I'll keep that as a local discussion. Any other questions, comments in closing? Um, Will you have any... um... You mentioned Kwanzaa. Will you be doing anything virtually where the other divisions can participate? Uh, we didn't, we hadn't officially um, mentioned it. Uh, right now we're playing, we're trying to just get everything for the in-person gathering. It'll most likely just be an in-person gathering. Okay, understood. Um, and um brother andrew um i think i have his email address i will um send him the notice for our secretary's meeting thank you i appreciate that uh brother john one more thing um sure. when will there be a general meeting you know general regular 421 meeting the 11th is our first meeting of this month no way yeah um, and then on the 25th would be CBPM? Uh, we're probably going to cancel the 25th because that's Christmas Day. Well, yeah, that, uh, but 25th would yeah. be UNIA meeting because we got second and fourth Sunday. 
Okay. Your um your phone number nine nine five seven is the last four digits. No, no, no. My phone number is nine four zero. Nine four zero. Brother Andrew, just give me a call. Just give me a call after this meeting. I gotta update you. Um I gotta update you okay. and Okay. Okay. All right. Um if there's nothing else, um since we did talk about economy, uh, please, if you can, donate uh, to our Cash App UNI 421 Fund. And Chicago, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, Y'all have done an excellent job um, supporting us. Uh, so, you know, I uh, just wanted to mention that um, and, and thank you. But <clears throat> uh, for those that can, um, feel free to donate to our Cash App Dollar Sign UNI 421 Fund. Um, and that's that's all I have. So if there's nothing else, um, would somebody, um, somebody want to close us out? I'll, I'll call on somebody. I got the closing job. Thank you, First Vice President. Your, your, your black right fist in the air. One God. One God. One God. One A. One A. One destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. Africa. 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 For the Africans. For the Africans. Africa. Africa. Those at home. Those, those at home. home. And those abroad. And those, those abroad. 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 Face first. Face first. Face first, man. Face first. <laughs> Shutting it down. Uh, Race first. Race first, family. Have a blessed week.